Yeah, it's me, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're living in a time now where people argue on behalf of black people about things black people aren't even upset about. I heard this one white lady online. She's like, I'm upset and outraged by the lack of diversity in Tim Burton movies. <laughs> and I know for a fact that black people don't care about being in Tim Burton movies. <laughs> it's not like I woke up this morning like, you know what the most difficult thing about being a black man in America is? I'm unrepresented in Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> it's not a real thing, you know. I don't like those white saving movies, you know? Makes me want to like flip the script, like have my own white saving movie where I coach a fat white girl through a hot dog eating contest. <laughs> Call it the fat side. <laughs> she's walking down the street, she's like, I don't believe in myself. I'm like, I believe in you. <laughs> she's like, really, what do you see in me? I'm like, a whole lot of hot dogs. <laughs> and then she chokes and dies on the hot dog. But the good news is, I want an Oscar, so. <laughs> and my mom doesn't like that joke. <laughs> she always says, if you don't have anything nice to say, then you just like your father. <laughs> and my girlfriend is white, that's just who she is, it's not a come up. And uh, I feel like the dangers we're experiencing apart are neutralized more together, that makes sense. Like one time we were on the subway platform facing each other and standing by me looking in her direction was the guy's like licking his lips. It's like putting on chapstick for way too long. And she felt nervous, held my hand, felt safe. And then standing by in her looking in my direction were two fully uniformed police officers. And I felt nervous, held her hand, felt safe. <laughs> And then a cop started putting on chapstick. <laughs> yeah, this actually happened to me recently. I was uh, pulled over by the cops in the cab. Yeah, I didn't know they could do that either. <laughs> and they put on the lights, boop, and the cab driver was like, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> they came to shine the lights in the back seat. They're like, I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure those guys are right. We had some robberies at gunpoint tonight. And it made me nervous, because like, as a kid, like cops would come to my school and read books to us, but like in that moment, I felt like I was in a Dr. Seuss book that was trying to demonstrate racism to children. <laughs> Just like, cop I am, I am cop I am. <laughs> I do not like black man or woman. <laughs> I would not like them on a boat. I would not like them on a goat. <laughs> I would not like them eating cookies. I would not like them wearing hoodies. <laughs> I would not like them anywhere, to be honest. <laughs> Except maybe my fantasy basketball team. <laughs> They came over like, where are you coming from? I was like, a comedy show. They're like, where are you going to? I was like, a comedy show. <laughs> They're like, oh, really? You're a comedian? Tell me a joke. And I was like, you just pulled over my cab? <laughs> Nigga, that's the joke. <laughs> that's all you get, you goofy bitch. I don't know. I don't know, I think race relations are getting better though. I don't know if y'all heard, but a KKK leader was caught with a black gay prostitute. Yeah, sounds progressive. <laughs> he hates blacks, he hates gays when they're together for some reason. He's like, oh, I dabble. <laughs> it's like two things he hates became something he loves, you know? I get it, I hate mayonnaise and tuna fish. But when they're together, who would have known? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's hard for black men especially to talk about depression because we have so many cool words available to us to undermine how we really feel, you know? <laughs> like a couple years ago, I was having some suicidal thoughts and depression, so I checked myself into a psych unit, and um, I know you guys are looking at me like Jordan, but you're so handsome. <laughs> and well put together. But you know what they say, black don't crack, only psychologically. <laughs> I got out of the psych unit and a friend of mine was like, are you okay, man? Is everything all right? But I had so many cool words available to me. I was like, yeah, I was just tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't just tripping, I had a severe mental breakdown. <laughs> if anything, I might've been bugging, but I wasn't tripping. 
I went to see my therapist. He's like, how's your week? I was like, I was on one. <laughs> he looked at my prescription like, you're supposed to be on two. <laughs> yeah. People have weird beliefs. I think it's funny how some people don't believe in depression, but believe in Jesus. Like, Jesus was depressed. Like, he washed people's feet using his hair in tears. If you had a friend who washed people's feet using his hair in tears, you'd be like, at least I'm doing better than Jesus. <laughs> also, there's a scripture in the Bible that just says, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. That means somebody saw him crying and was like, yup. That's what he's doing. Try to help him at all. That's why I read the Bible. Just a lot of bad friends. <laughs> I read the Bible, that verse was like, Jesus wept. And then I went and asked him if he was all right. <laughs> and he said, it's not one big thing, just a lot of little small things. <laughs> There's no notes on here. All it says is, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm doing better.